committee reports. We're going to have announcements for, from a couple of committees, but we're now having formal committee reports presented tonight, because we do have the candidates who are going to be speaking, and we'll have a chance for question and answer. Thank you so much. Um, but all, all the reports will be attached to the meetings. And meetings are, uh, meeting minutes are always published on the GANIC website in the documents section, and the reports will be attached right there. So you can find out all the information about the, um, about the committees. Um, but one thing I do want to talk about for, in terms of the IT committee, so we had put things on hold for a little bit because of our, our little fiscal crunch that we had, but the migration for the website, um, as you, some of you may know this already, some of you may not know this, our website is written in a language called Drupal, and our web guru who Anne can testify is a very good, robust um, site because it does a lot of, it, it performs a lot of functions because of the integration with Wild Apricot. Anyway, Drupal is having an update. Um, this is across the board for all, all websites and all things that use Drupal, so there's an update and a migration that will be taking place this month. It should not affect us really in any way, and it should be completed by Thanksgiving. And then once the new site is live, you will all be able to work on your profiles, you'll be able to update all your information. Uh, a lot more bells and whistles, a different look. Um, it's really going to be nice. So thank you all for your patience. Designing a website is hard enough as it is, and then when you design a website via committee, it makes it even more difficult. So. It is coming and we should be live and ready to go at the end of this year. In um, terms of news from overseas, and in January is the WFTGA. I will be attending as the GANIC representative. Um, they have announced the new um, countries that are bidding, okay, and the countries that are bidding. I just want to make sure to get the correct um, cities in each respective country. So Ireland. Um, will be the host city will be Cork City in Ireland, um, Japan Kyushu Association of Interpreters in Fukuoka, um, so, sorry Fukuoka, Japan, okay, in Sabah Malaysia, um, Manila the Philippines and Istanbul Turkey, okay, those are the countries that are bidding, and so I'll be able to let you know what happens in January um, at the WFTGA. They'll be having the vote, voting there. John. I just want to clarify, just to make that clear, that those are the, so you're going for the, that meeting next year, they are bidding for the 2026. This is the 2026, yeah. yeah. This is for the 2026, to host the 2026 WFTGA um, uh, um, biannual meeting. Okay, so I'm going to the ones in Siracusa, in Sicily. I'll be going there in January. Okay, so those are also just keep you posted. I do post the WFTGA information when we get the news from them. Oh yeah, there's plenty of room, everybody. Please have your have a seat. So um, and then finally, the membership renewals have already started. Started today. I know um, uh, Jeremy sent out the announcement as a treasurer about the membership renewals. Our dues did go up, but they are only one hundred and fifty dollars through December thirty first. So when the ball drops, the rate goes up. Okay, so send in your money. Now you can pay online with your credit card. I saw a couple emails go by, people asking if you can pay by credit card, and yes you can. It's very, very easy to renew online. You'll be receiving your invoice, and you'll see the email explains exactly how to do it. So it's very straightforward, very easy, and you get to save $25, if you renew before the end of December, okay? Because we are already in our new fiscal year right now, okay? Um, that's really all. Um, that's really all I have. Um, Anne, did you want to come up to speak for a moment? Thank you. So two things. Hi, I'm Anne McDermott. I'm your membership chair and outgoing member at large on the board. It's been an honor to serve you all and be part of this, and I'm looking forward to tonight's speeches. <laughs> I had to do that two years ago, didn't we, Beth? <laughs> and so two little announcements. So Tony DeSanti, Tony and I are trying to put together some social things for everybody to be able to kind of just get to know each other other than like the formal meeting that we have. So we're all going to gather if you want to join us at uh, St. James Gate at 441 Amsterdam Avenue after this meeting to just, you know, have a drink and say hello. Um, 
So yeah, you're more than welcome. Tony, do you want to say something? It's on the corner of 81st. 81st Street in Amsterdam. Okay, so come come by afterwards. And also uh, along the for the awards committee uh, 50th anniversary party, Sarah has been working very hard. Um, I've been attending. She's been working. And uh, she, we do have a venue that we think is going to work. We haven't confirmed it yet, so I don't want to announce where it's going to be. But um, the committee has, you know, put together sort of an agenda, and they have great ideas. And she will let us know when it's finalized because we haven't really signed the paperwork yet. But um, probably sometime in February or March, we will have the big celebration. So get ready. Because um, Sarah will be arriving uh, a little a little later, um, and she'll be on her way. Jonathan, I'm sorry, did you have? Oh no, you're good. Okay. Is it me? <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I will come. <laughs> okay. I'm like, here you go. All right. Um, what, and what one thing she did want to announce to everybody in terms of the awards, because we will be giving out one award at the 50th anniversary event, and that is our Hershey is all right. I'm not going to steal your thunder. Go go go. Here she comes. <laughs> We have exactly one announcement to make on behalf of the anniversary committee, and that announcement is the one award we will be giving this year for guiding spirit goes to a man who I am so delighted to announce to you, our very own Mark Landman. Now Mark is a I'll give him a hug as soon as you see him because, oh God, we're so thrilled. And that's the whole announcement. Thank you so much. <laughs> right. Thank you, sir. Yeah, have a seat, seat, seat right next to Anne. There's plenty in there. Okay, yeah. I see people drifting in as if there's a spot, you know. It's like the subway. You'll put your bag on the seat, let somebody put their tush on it instead. Okay. All right. So thank you, Sarah. I think we're all set with that. And now, Jonathan, you may come. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm Jonathan Tour. I am the uh, Constitution Committee Chair. I'm reading, I normally don't read, um, but I'm gonna try to keep this quick. So uh, on behalf of the Constitution Committee, but really on behalf of the board, I uh, wanted to remind everybody uh, that there are two pending changes to the bylaws and the board seeks input regarding both of them. Uh, the first change, uh, regards when the president is unexpectedly unable to attend either a monthly membership meeting or a board meeting. Uh, this is a very rare occurrence. It has not happened in at least the last two years, probably the last four years, and with the board th thought that it was worth addressing. Um, it is a means of simply having a procedure in place to eliminate confusion and or potential conflict. Uh, this is actually something that Harvey Davidson brought to our attention and the board uh, reviewed the idea and came up with the following very simple proposal, um, which is when the president is unable to attend unexpectedly and has not appointed a vice president to preside, uh, the remainder of the board gets together, has a very quick vote, and chooses that vice president. It's a means of making sure that we don't know who is in charge. Uh, and it really only lasts, that vote only lasts until the end of the meeting. So this is not like you know, me, the vice president, gets to take over for the rest of the term. It's just a very limited duration uh, solution. The second change is a slight rewording of the explanation of the method of changing the bylaws. Essentially, it creates a, more of a step-by-step -step process um, and the real significant change is that it actually highlights the membership's role in advising the board in terms of those changes. So not only does it say if the board is influenced by member uh, advice uh, and member comment uh, and they decide to change the proposal regarding the bylaws, they have to bring the new proposal back to the membership again for another commentary period. Uh, and it also reminds the board that they are more than welcome to seek comment prior to proposing uh, a bylaw change. Um, so this is not necessarily a form for uh, receiving input. If people are like really gung-ho about having something to say about it, you certainly can. Um, but the board would prefer that you send an email to board at gannick.org. Of course, you can always uh, grab a board member, but the preferred 
means for providing the input for those bylaw changes is via email board at gannick.org. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jonathan. And as you said, it's really just a way of clarifying all the steps to make sure we're doing everything correctly. And so when a bylaw change is made, we know exactly the steps to make. Um, so we're doing a lot of little, sort of nit, little tiny little housekeeping details to make sure everything's set, especially when we transition to the um, to the next board. So um, now I'd like to have Patrick Casey come up for government lunch. All right, good evening everybody, how are you? Good evening. Nice, thanks. All right, uh, one of our pet peeves is getting a little attention. We, uh, we, not we, everybody, if you're on the right mailing list, got a notification of a proposed rule regarding vending and elevated pedestrian walkways and bicycle lanes on bridges. Yay. What could they be talking about? Okay, here you go. So here's the deal. Uh, it's not an in-person public hearing. Online only, it'll be Zoom. This information, by the way, will be posted on Gannick's social media, and I will also put it out through our wild apricot software. But pencil in November 15th, November 15th, that's the date of the hearing. If you're just going to log in to Zoom to watch, and maybe you're gonna ask to get called on, you don't have to register in advance. If, however, you wish to make a statement, and I know you do, Send an email, and again, I'm going to put this online tomorrow, rules at dot.nyc.gov. You put in your request for an opportunity to speak. You will have three minutes. Just three minutes. You should do that. Let's see if we can get as many Gannicks lined up, see if we can get our voices heard during the hearing. But I encourage everyone, including those who get to speak at the meeting, to send in their statements by email, and that is uh, when the link will be published tomorrow. And uh, that will also give you the opportunity online to post photographs. And I know you've all got pictures of illegal booze sales, among other things going on. So this is the something that's been a problem. It's actually cost many of you tours. So I hope you're all going to respond. So the dates again, the hearing is November 15th, it's online at 10 to 11. And the deadline is November 8th. And I'm picking November 8th, they don't say you have to do it by November the 8th, but that's the handicapped deadline. So take advantage of it, jump in, and make sure we can get our voices heard. We have one question, Robin. No, I just wanna say if you're gonna send a statement in, either by mail or email, the deadline Uh, comment deadline is the 15th. Yep, yeah, looking right at the uh, announcement. Sorry. Cindy? Uh, getting it early is, all, is always great, yeah. Anyone else? Cindy. Would you suggest that you develop a cloud for the government relations that if you're going to send something to the state that you send it also make a copy of your local representative? Oh, absolutely. Uh, actually, I. I'll put it in tomorrow. The city council representative for Dumbo, Wrestler, is the one kind of leading the charge on this. Um, yes, the other side of the bridge, Manhattan, I forget his name. Yeah, he's interested, but he's not <coughs> being as noisy as Wrestler. So it's Wrestler on the city council, and he covers Dumbo. Last call. I can't He's not, he's not being very visible on this. Is it uh, Christopher Marti or no, that something Christopher? I'm not going to say it because I'm not certain. I have to look back again. I'm getting confused with my council members. But again, it's wrestler who's leading the charge, and that's where it should be directed. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, a segue into the nominations. I will uh, take a moment. All of you. Halloween's over, dude. Get, get it together. Uh, all of the candidates who will be making statements tonight, you have the opportunity to have that statement posted to the Gannick website. But it doesn't happen automatically. Number one, it is voluntary. And two, send it to secretary at Gannick.org. 
and I can post it on the Gannett website. Uh, my one stipulation is the format so that it can be easily put up on our website, which can get glitchy with too much code. Make sure it's, a, it's an email with a Microsoft Word attachment, an Apple Pages attachment, or a Google Drive link, which I can download as a Microsoft Word attachment. So you have the opportunity to preserve your campaign speech in posterity if you send it to secretarygannett.org and I'll post it on the website as I receive them. Thank you. Yes, well, thank you, Patrick. And yeah, please do send in your statements and they'll be all posted on the documents on the documents um, section of the website. All right, and we'll post them. We post, and this happened in the last election too, they're basically posted as soon as we get it. We get one, we post it. We get one, we post it. Okay, so they'll be up there and it'll say Gannick elections, and so people will be able to, to filter by that tag, okay? So, um, yeah, so with, uh, yeah, Mike. Can you just run through what the process is between now and the December meeting in terms of ballots and deadlines and all that, just for doing the election yeah. process itself? Yeah, sure. All right, I'm gonna pull it right from the Constitution, which I know you've all memorized chapter and verse. <laughs> Yes. All right, let me catch up here. Do you know we've done the nominations part? That's done, that closed last night. There are no more nominations. All right. Um, nomination. Okay, each candidate's campaign statement may be read at the November meeting. If the candidate is unable to attend the meeting, the statement may be read aloud by another member. In addition to being read aloud at the November meeting, the candidate may post his or her statement on the documents of the discussions forum page or its equivalent. Slight amendment, I'm, ha I'm having you send it to me so I can post it, it's just easier to get it done that way. All members may question the candidates at this November meeting. Further questioning and discussion of the candidates may take place on the discussions forum page or its equivalent on the Gannick website between November and December meetings. Voting will be done by secret ballot during the period of time between the November and December membership meetings of the second year of the term of the in the following manner. Individual ballots will be conveyed electronically to every full member of the association. Each full member shall vote electronically using the protocol communicated by the election committee. Ballots will be submitted by a specific date determined in advance by the executive board. The results will be announced during the course of the December meeting. No results will be announced prior to the December meeting. The new executive board shall take office at the beginning of the January meeting following the election. The time between the meetings of December in the second year of the term and the following January shall serve as a transitional period. Are there any questions? Yes, Cindy. Why not? Um, as you, I've been a member for, well, since I've been a tour guide, about 10 years. And in the past, I've been a member for about 10 years. And in the past, we've had like co-vice presidents. You've always had co-vice presidents? There are two. There are always two vice presidents. Co-secretaries? Two secretaries. Yeah. Oh, we did? Oh, that goes way back then. Yeah, Lee Gilmer and Karen. Okay, thank you. So, I happen to love both candidates, but would they have to get the same amount of votes to be co presidents, per se? How would that work? Our Constitution now reads one president. So, there'll be one president, and if it is a tie, we'll have to structure a runoff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm not I sure. Thought that, I thought there was a time period for discussion. Questioning happens tonight. And that's it. There's nothing online that you submit afterwards. Oh I'm yes. Sure. Once, if there are candidate statements, where the candidate statements are posted, okay. and you see something, and you click the little button, so you have a reply to that. Right. Yes, that will be posted, and everyone in Gannick will see that discussion. So, is there a time limit for discussion before the vote takes place? The date has not yet been determined. 
uh, because we have our board meeting coming up later this month. That date will be determined while this is going on. We don't want everyone to have the opportunity to question every candidate deeply, but we also want time to get that ballot out. So it'll probably go out later in uh, later in November. Is voting only online? Only online. So um, since the voting is online, okay, and we through the Wild Apricot system, just to make everyone uh, sure everyone is clear on that, the candidates who are running, so uh, namely Jeremy, who always has full access to Wild Apricot, will not have access to um, parts of Wild Apricot. So I don't want anyone to be thinking that you know Jeremy can be going in here. You know. we, we, we prefer insurrections and coups that everyone can see, but, you know, um, but anyway, so, so I, will be help, I will be assisting Patrick with the electronic, um, the electronic aspect of it. Since it is sent electronically, it's super easy and it's a very quick vote. Before everything, and actually I think our constitution probably should reflect that since it's electronic, we can set um, more specific deadlines for the discussion period. But, but since it's done electronically, it can be sent very quickly, and people can have, you know, a, a, even just a week before the um, December meeting to actually uh, make sure the vote, because the vote will be announced at the December meeting, okay? And so, you know, we ask your patience with this, but we want to give everybody time to discuss, and we also want to make sure the election runs smoothly. So I'll be helping Patrick with that, because well, we're not running. John. Uh, Patrick, you just I just one detail I think might be worth repeating. We will be uh, sending the ballot out after our monthly after our monthly board meeting. So that would be after on or after the twentieth of November. That would be yeah. correct. Yes, mm -hmm. so that is correct. So it's basically That's Thanksgiving week. We meet we meet on Monday. So I would say look for it, Jerry. Uh, I just want to actually step in and correct my fellow board member. Our next board meeting is on the 13th. Oh, oh better be there, Jason. Yes. <laughs> Check your calendar, Sam. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry, because yeah, because we were, because yeah. of right. So yeah, after the 13th, after the 13th, because we'll be short. Okay. So we can use that as our, as our guideline. How's that? Okay, Nina? Um, I came in a little late. Is this meeting going to be, the speech is going to be recorded? Yeah, it's being recorded oh, okay. right now. Great. Okay, that's good. Because we got our rescue phone. Okay. All right, so that's it. Anything else in terms of? Oh, one thing about your emails. Um, we will announce when the ballot's going out in advance through our social media and a World Apricot posting. And when you start writing, you say, I didn't get my email. Guess what Wild Apricot does? It tells me that you got it. So you might get a response that says, check your spam. <laughs> we will be able to track it. So if anyone, after we announce it's gone out, says they haven't gotten it, reach out to me at secretaryorganic.org and we can correct it. It is all being done electronically. There are no more paper ballots. And we answered your question sufficiently. Yeah. Great. Yeah. All right, it's show time. All right, so I know, what about this thing, like I had no filter set on my email, and so I get all, again, it stuff goes into a newsletters folder. If anybody's Gmail starts sorting stuff out, also check if you have a random newsletters folder. Okay, I don't have Gmail, my husband who messes with my email. But anyway, stuff goes into my newsletters folder. So check the spam, check junk, check newsletters, all right? Look around, but you will be sent it, and we will see, we can see that it has been delivered. We can see when you open it. We can see if you didn't look at it. And we can see all, we can see it all. All right. We can't see how you vote. Yeah, we cannot see that. All right, so the voting, yeah, the voting is completely anonymous, and while they forgot town is it all. So we're gonna start with our members at large. And first up, yes, it's you, Gary. Yes, Gary Dennis. Um, I think he's from the Upper West Side. I'm just not sure. I don't have all the material with us, but it's just going to make our. It was. Post, it's just going to make our meeting go way too long if I'm reading the descriptions of every single one. But the member at large basically acts as a liaison between the board and the members. Um, if you don't have a board member you want to talk to, you can find a member at large. And as a member of the board, we would just like give stuff to the members at large to do that other people weren't able to do. That's great. Right. Yeah, the descriptions on the documents, you can see the details of it, okay, but 
Let's hear from the man himself, Gary Denton. Right. Um, well, uh, first of all, I want to say that hello to the people who are watching at home. There you go. And also, um, I know, don't, I'm out of work on mic. All right, anyway. Um, I got 20 minutes here. All right, anyway, the point is, um, I was very flattered that Michael Dillinger nominated me for this. And my first response was, why, you know, there's got to be someone better, right? Um, I love this profession. I love it. I, I call it a calling. I had a movie rental store on the Upper West Side. When we were thrown out of the building in 2006, I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. And I used to complain about the double-decker buses, and no offense if you work on double-deckers, please, all right? So it's no one in this room, all right? But I would hear things, and my wife said to me, shut up, you think you do it better, do it then, right? Well, she actually doesn't sound like that because she's from Westchester. But the point is that, no offense, Susan, no offense. All right, but the point is that, that she dared me to do it and I fell in love with this profession. It's a calling, baby, that's what it is. I, I, can't, I can't remember what I did before. It doesn't matter. It's like being a parent. You don't remember your life before. It is like, it's been there all along. It's just now someone gave you a license to do it. Um, the position of member at large, liaison between you, you know, membership at large and the board, um, is, uh, it's, it's a mouthpiece. It's what it is. You've got a problem, you go to a member at large. Right? There you go. Then we go rough up Emma. There you go. <laughs> uh, the wins, right? There you go. She's easy though. She's easy. She's 90 pounds, right? But there you go. And I think it should be called member at medium, you know? Because yeah, 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 it's like in your size soon. All right, anyway, the point is um, that I don't take this lightly, and I know some of you out there who do know me think that, you know, I joke around a lot, and um, I have missed a meeting or two. Sarah, sorry, and uh, uh, you know, but um, I would take I take this very seriously. I did reject other positions because I felt I wasn't ready for it. You know, I am I am older than I, you than I look, but I didn't think I was ready for it because this is a serious business. What needs to happen with this group is that we need to be as a, as an agency taken more seriously. We need to be able to say to, to our operators that screw us over. We'll screw you over, you won't get a good guy ever again. Or something as simple as a Brooklyn Bridge Visitor Center in the Chamber Street Station where there is an old section there, which I'm not gonna go into what it was because, all right, it was a baggage check area. But the point is, is that in that area, you have restrooms. You have an area that can be turned into something that you can have a Starbucks franchise in there, you know, make, generating income, whatever but it could be a Brooklyn Bridge Visitor Center. This city should be embarrassed. We're the most important city in this country, if not the world, goddammit, and we don't have a, 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 a government agency running tourism. We got a quasi thing here, no offense to them, but it should be the city doing it, it shouldn't be them. And that is something that Gannick, and I hope to be, able to be part of that, pushing for the city of New York to wake up and, and regulate the fact that the Brooklyn Bridge has gotten as bad as it has. The fact that there are people selling t-shirts and there are snake charmers by the East Coast War Memorial. The fact that there are people in Central Park with those spinning things. Someone's gonna trip on the Brooklyn Bridge too. Someone's gonna get hit in the head by a, a phone going around. They're opening themselves to all so types of lawsuits, but it's just distracting. It's a horrible distraction from the beauty that this, that's why people come here. They don't come here to see me. They come here to see this, right? So that's what I'm saying. So if, um, if this works out, I'm on, I guess because it's just by default, I, um, <laughs> which is my favorite part of the menu. But uh, <laughs> seriously though, we need to push this. And um, I certainly will lean on the board, whatever that board is, I will lean, I will do my part to, to be taken seriously. I love saying I'm a tour guide. I love wearing my license. My wife has had to tell me on many occasions, knowing I had it on, to take it off. You're not working now. <laughs> no, superheroes never sleep. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because we all are. Right? There you go. Thank you, and thank you at home. There you go. <laughs> Any questions? I just want to say. Oh, questions oh, after the category. Sorry. See, she made me One say that, Patrick. Time. She made me say that. Mm -hmm. Questions after the category. So we hear from all the members at large, and then they'll come back up, and we will have questions for all three of them. All right. So next up, 
Michaela Fede. Hello. <laughs> okay. Couldn't have said it better myself, Gary. Very good. Um, so guides, we clearly feel we have this duty and obligation to show everyone the significance of our city, historically and presently. And we can do it through bridges, we can do it through buildings, but we do it mostly through ourselves. And that's, is that, okay, that was me. Okay, good. We do it through ourselves. We, we are the tour at the end of the day. And I wanted to join this group because I love tour guides as much as I love being one. And I think this is a room of some of the most intelligent and interesting, unique, and enthusiastic New Yorkers that, that I've met. So selfishly, as member at large, I want to know all of you, really. And I want to hear about your night at CBGB. And I want to hear about what the best diner is. And I want to hear the craziest thing you bought on Canal Street. And I want, I want all those stories. But I also want you to tell me what, what you think you'd want Gannick to do for you and what you think you could do for Gannick, because it's just, we are a club. It's an organization, yes, but I think we are really a group of people who'd like to be friends, that share a passion and can nerd out over New York for a couple hours a month, and we do it every day. So I definitely have seen such amazing advice and assistance and inspiration given through all the members, whether it's on the Facebook page, whether it's in person. So, you know, you can describe me as many things, and you cannot describe me as several things, like tall or, <laughs> or blonde, but you can't say I'm not approachable. So I would love to be a liaison to the board for you, because I want to know the board, and I want to know you. So, perfect. I'll be right there. Just look down when you talk to me a little bit, not physically and not, you know, not in the other way, and uh, I, I'd really love to be, I, I'm a tour guide for life, I'm pretty in at this point. Totally what Gary said, it's like you forget, I, I don't even remember what I wanted to do in college, I'm doing this now, and I like this, and I'll do this forever, so thank you. <laughs> thank you, Kara. All right, so our last candidate for a member at large is um, Joseph Landon. Good evening, everybody. Can you all hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, I was very surprised when I got a um, nomination or a recommendation for this uh, position. Um, I joined Gannick about three years ago with the intent on representing tourism in New York City, guides in New York City, because there are a lot of us who don't get to have our story told and told the way that people should hear it. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to represent the Gannett Board because it's something that's definitely needed. As it's something that's important to me. My journey as a New York City tour guide started in 1997. I was 14 years old and I worked for a small tourism company up in Harlem a long time ago. I worked in uh, just someone helping them with guests. Um, over the last 26 years, I've become this person that you see before you. you. Um, I don't consider myself to be a special person. I just am who I am, and my char character speaks for itself. And over the last three years, a lot of you have gotten to know me, and I'm just overjoyed and overwhelmed that I would be even considered for this uh, position in this role. Um, there are a lot of things that we all bring to the table as members of Gannick and members of people of citizens of New York City, and I believe that this organization or me in this role can help people understand why our needs to the city is important. The last three years has been a prime example of how important each one of us play in the city. And uh, we need to let big government and the people who have the power know why we're here, why we do what we do. Uh, for me, tourism is a lifestyle. I recently left my job, my career after 16 years to go into tourism full time. So this is my life moving forward until I decide to do something else. And I know a lot of you all feel the same way. Like this is not just a job, this is your lifestyle. 
your family members, your friends come to you to tell them the best about the city that you can offer and then some. Um, I didn't really have anything prepared because this is something that's new to me, but one of the things that I can guarantee is as a member of large, I will hear what you have to say. I will let the board know. I will be a liaison between the board and you all to provide the best experiences that you can have as, as members of GANIC. And all of us can make a change in the city and let's just see what we can do together. Thank you. and Michaela. If anyone has questions for our three candidates and members at large, yep, stand up and state your name and I'll repeat your question. Get on the stage. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're shy, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Stand behind this. Oh, okay. No one's going to see me. Okay. Hello, my name is Rosalind Spidner and I have a question for um, Gary and Michaela, I wanted to know how long you both were members of GANIC. Some question, how long were Gary and Michaela members of GANIC? I don't know. I don't remember when I, I was a provisional member for, oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know when I joined. I don't I know that uh, I can look it up, but um, Five years. I don't know way years. more than that. Were you at meetings at the Edison? You can use that as our... Okay. Yet? No, 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 no. So no. I wasn't at a meeting. So. I, I would say five years plus. I would say definitely five years plus okay. because uh, I've been a tour guide since I think I found my first license, and it's 2009 is when I I I, I became ordained. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but seriously, I I found out about this group through Matt Baker, who suggested I go to a meeting. There was a, a wonderful uh, guy named J.P. Palermo, somebody, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who, suggest, who said, I'll write you a letter. Lee Gelber wrote me a letter, and I still have it, because, um, ah, shit, I'm gonna cry, but, uh, because I love Lee Gelber, and he was one of my, uh, you know, kind of like a mentory kind of guy to me, and, uh, um, but uh, that's where it came, that's, so it's back that far. Um, Matt Baker, I think, was president, Matt Cummings was on the board at that meeting. So that's like 2014. 10, yeah, 2014. At least 2014. At least since then. And so at least nine, nine, ten years. Okay. Michaela? Thank you. Less. <laughs> <laughs> about a year and a half. Thank so you. Michaela, about a year and a half. All right, great. Georgia, you said three years. Yes, three okay. years. Any other questions? Cindy? I mean, you all let anyway, so there's no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, just so I get a sense of how different you are besides no offense and height. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're This was an accident. It really was. My question is, if you had to think of one reason why you would want to One reason that makes you the happiest for being a, a being GAMP member. We'll start with Michaela. Uh -huh. Good point. Oh. There, there are several. No, I think camaraderie at the end of the day. I really <laughs> am. Oh, yeah, we're recording it. Oh. Camaraderie. Mm -hmm. um, I really am interested in everyone's journey with how they became a guide, where you like to guide, what brought you into that. And so just getting to know everyone has is what I've gotten the most from being part of it. That's my final answer. What was the question? Um, well, yeah, it's definitely it's it's a com camaraderie um, with the hopes of becoming more powerful. Not me personally, because I am. But uh, but see, no, like the the group becoming uh, this this is a fantastic group. I'm looking around this room, and there are some people in this room that I would be terrified to have them watch my tour, right? Thank you. <laughs> and, and you too, Cindy. But, uh, you know, you know. but seriously, uh, I am, I, I'm not gonna throw names around, but there are two people in here that uh, I, will, I would have been working for this Thanksgiving, and either one of them is, oh my goodness, how fantastic is this group, right? That I don't care. 
I don't care who I'm working for, as long as it's one of these guys, right? There are people in this room that I would absolutely not spending, mind spending nine hours in a hotel lobby with, right? But seriously, because that's part of the job, right? And it's, it's but the safety, the safety, it's about safety for me, you know, that you feel safe with this group. And, um, and there's no one here I would, there's no one in this room that I would not trust as a, as a guy. You know, trust about getting you know, a just being with. So I, I hope that answered it. So, all right. Jojo will give the last answer, and that will be time. For me, it's uh, knowledge. Um, all of us in here have something to share and to tell. And I'm always learning as I'm talking to everybody and telling the stories or them listening to me. It's just a ex great exchange of knowledge here. And that's what makes me the happiest is that. You know, I'm not the smartest person in the room, and there's always somebody who has an experience that I can learn from. Thank you all. That was really, that was really great. And a, you're, you're an excellent bunch. All right. So for secretary, uh, we have Lee Hanby. Let's come up. So um, I'm really honored to be nominated to be secretary, a secretary organic, one of two. So um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about myself and what I think I could bring to the position of secretary. So um, like some other organic members, I'm a retired librarian. So I had a 36 year career in New York City as a nonprofit librarian and my employer for the last 20 years before I retired in 2014 was the Open Society Foundations, which is a very large uh, grant-making organization. So um, after retiring, I started guiding, like again, like other organic members, by becoming a Big Apple greeter in 2015. And I enjoyed guiding so much that I got my license to be a New York City tour guide in 2017, and I joined GANIC shortly thereafter. So I'd say I've been a member since the beginning of 2018. And um, so I lead both actual and virtual tours, and I specialize in a very small area. It's the Upper West Side, Morningside Heights, three neighborhoods in Harlem and Washington Heights. So um, I have a lot of experience serving on boards. Um, as a number, boards of a number of small organizations. So, um, and I think I've specifically held the position of secretary for the four that I'm about to remember, um, to mention. So the first was the um, Northern New Jersey chapter of the National Organization for Women. So that's in Bergen County, New Jersey, where I actually lived for most of my adult life before I moved into New York City in 2011. And um, I moved on from there to Shelter Our Sisters Board. So that's the Domestic Violence Services Agency, nonprofit organization in Bergen County, New Jersey. Oh, that's where you live also, right? Um, and then um, I served on two boards in connection with my library career. I was on the board of the Substance Abuse Librarians and Information Specialists, better known as SALIS. And then I was um, on the board of the New York City chapter of the Special Libraries Association. And so actually, I became president of all four of those boards that I've just mentioned. And um, also, from 2017 to 20, 2022, I was secretary of my Wellesley College class, even though we Graduated a very long time ago. We keep class officers going at um, five-year intervals in between reunions. So um, I was responsible there for writing a quarterly 500-word um, column about news of college classmates that was published in the alumni magazine. But I do want to say if I serve on the Gannett board as secretary, I can't imagine myself having any ambitions of moving up to a higher position the way I did on the other boards. 
Um, so being a guide has been a wonderful and unexpected retirement career. So, and I've really um, liked and admired Gannick ever since I joined. And that's not something I can say about every organization that I've belonged to and been <laughs> active in. So, um, Gannick really deserves that. Um, so I really enjoyed meeting other guides and learning from other guides. Um, I've attended many Gannick fans and loved um, exploring, you know, including our space here tonight. Um, I've listened to many interesting speakers at monthly meetings and uh, picked up great tips from professional development sessions. Um, I think what impresses me most about Gannick is the passion of Gannick activists and uh, members. The, um, first of all, I think that's the most important quality a tour guide can bring to tour guiding, besides the ability of the audience to be able to hear you. I mean, first you have to speak loud enough, but then you really have to have a passion for what you're showing the um, visitors. And I think um, I see that passion that guides have carrying over into their passion for the profession and for making the profession better for all of us. So that's my favorite thing about Gannick. Um, um, so in addition to um, bringing a lot of experience being on board to the Gannick board, um, I see serving on the board as a great way to give back to the organization. Actually, I've been feeling like I haven't um, given enough to the organization, I haven't been joining committees and serving on them. So um, I'm actually very pleased to have this opportunity to give back to an organization that I like so much. So thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, just hold on because uh, we won't be having questions from Mitch Palooza, but I'm just opening up his speech. Um, Mitch gave me um, the text of his of his speech um, to read to you all tonight. So I'll read it as he sent to me. Good evening, everyone. This is Mitch Palooza. This is speaking through me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry I can't be there tonight, but I'm out on Long Island listening to Henry Winkler right now. He had tickets for it. Yeah, so I think, yeah, I take the phones over us. Okay. And that was me, sorry. All right, first I want to thank from the very bottom of my heart um, AJ Stevens for nomin nominating me for this position. I definitely will thank him again later. Second, think, um, since I think I'm running unopposed for this office, I guess the speech doesn't have to be particularly good. That's what he wrote. Okay. But since I think I'm an unknown entity to some or maybe most of you, I suppose I should take the opportunity to tell you a little about myself. I recently retired, actually exactly one year today, from the city of New York. I am an attorney and I've worked at many city agencies, but my last job was with, with the city was the Assistant Commissioner for Human Resources for the city's Department of Environmental Protection. I've been around. And I've actually been a licensed tour guide since I think 1990 or so, but I've never really used my license. I've always been the go-to person when relatives come to the city and I give tours of downtown to incoming interns to, at some of the places I worked. But I think I've earned my street cred as someone knowledgeable about New York by participating and doing respectably, he wrote that, in NYC trivia contests. <laughs> and I always knew that someday I would use this tour guide license um, for the forces of good, all caps. And now in my post-retirement years, I've picked up the greatest part-time gig as a tour ambassador at One World Observatory. And yes, which is there with me today, so that's really wonderful. Now, as far as being recording secretary or corresponding to secretary, rest assured I can take both Greg and Pittman shorthand. Well, that's not true, but between law school and my various jobs, I've become very skilled at taking notes and drawing doodles. I think I'll be very able to capture what people have said at our meetings. Again, I suspect I can't lose this vote, that would be depressing, right? But I appreciate your support. Okay. All right, so that was from Mitch. His last line was work, so I'll, I'll let him know that. Uh, but uh, any other questions for Lee? Do you want to come on up? Okay. Cal? Uh, Harvey? Harvey. 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 I'm sorry. Harvey, well, there, you mentioned that one of your first organizations uh, gave grants. Is there a possibility that organization you give us a grant? Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. That was the organization I retired from. Um, I don't think so. I, I wish uh, that were true, but they don't. Uh, fund this kind of organization, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, this, is, this, is Any other this is just a statement, I'll make it real quick. You said you haven't 
contributed. You have contributed. Oh. You've done the murals. I learned from you. I've actually oh, thank you. filmed some stuff yeah. on the bird murals. Yeah, thank on you. Tours. But no, you have done. You've done virtual tours, too. Right? Yes, I, I, that's how I have contributed so far, as I've done fans, both virtually and actually. So I, I'll add one word to that sentence. I haven't contributed enough. <laughs> so I welcome exactly. the opportunity to contribute more. <laughs> Any other questions for me? Oh, it's yes. Just a comment. I love the fact that you have experience as a secretary. Oh, That's okay. helpful to the organization. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next is um, Sarah Lyons for a treasurer. Everybody. All right, so at this point, everybody in this room knows me. I'm amazed everyone in this room isn't sick of me yet with how often I'm up here talking about awards or the anniversary. So I know you all know I love my job, and you know I all, you all know that I love Gannett, or else I wouldn't be here right now. I really do. So I won't waste too much of your time with that. I would rather tell you more about how I can serve as treasurer, because I know I'm running on a post, but I'm not really because I'm fully aware of the immense weight of responsibility that comes with this position. So I want you to know when you are putting your ballots in uh, that you can have confidence in me. So here's a rundown of who I am outside of our profession. So I actually have a master's degree in nonprofit management from Drexel University that I took from the comfort of my home in Queens. Uh, so I didn't even leave the city to do it. And as part of that degree, you have to master uh, the art of nonprofit accounting. Everything short of being a CPA. So I am fully pro uh, proficient on best practices in preparing financial audits, year-end financial reports. If anyone wants to see one of those, we did do one for Gannett for the Apple Awards. It was thorough. Uh, and also, uh, nonprofit tax documents. I know my way around a 990. I also have a decade of experience in nonprofit management for the theater, as well as small scale or for profit management, which is remarkably similar, uh, except for slightly different tax documents, including producing and managing my own theater productions, as well as for other people. Um, and I am very proud of their fiscal health under my care. Um, that we were able to maintain without compromising quality of product or focus on mission. Uh, I've also managed for-profit companies as executive assistants, chief operating officers for things like small boutique, uh, tech companies, things like that. Uh, and I am very proud to say that while all of them have shuttered their doors, it's mostly because the other people I work with are sick of being their own bosses because they're not us doing it all the time. And all of those companies closed in the black, very fiscally healthy. Uh, so, very important. Um, and because of all of this experience, I am also proficient in QuickBooks, Microsoft Office Suite, and the Google Suite, all of which are important tools used by the treasurer. And if anybody has any questions about my spreadsheets, I could go on forever. I would run over time. I am more than happy to share them with you at the end of this uh, meeting. I have a whole bunch of them on my phone and I'm so proud of them to like my babies. Uh, and most importantly, I am standing here running for treasurer because I actually want the job. No one bullied me into this. No one tried to scare me with math. I actually really want to do this. My proudest moment every day of my life is when I can be useful to the people I care about. And I care so deeply about you. So I would love to be useful to you. Thank you all so much. This is a question for our current treasurer. We don't have to have an external audit, no. Right. Uh, I'll, I'll just stay out really quick. We don't do an external audit. We do obviously have to file. We have um, an accountant that we hire who just processes our tax return every year. That's the only external thing that happens with our finances. Right. So my question is, will you recommend to our next president that we should have some sort of an internal audit, maybe an internal audit committee? I was hoping you'd ask that. I, for a 
for those of you, you brave souls who opened up my 20 page document on a fiscal report on the entirety of last award season, you know that I love having transparency in everything that we do. Um, I think that is a fantastic idea. I would absolutely love to have an audit um, that is supported by the board, should we have the capacity to do so. And I would love to do all the formatting on that document to make it as readable and accessible to everyone as possible. Because I know that some of you have seen some of the financial audits that have come out officially through the nonprofits that you've worked for, and they are dense. They are like impenetrable. That's not what I'm about. So I think that's a fantastic idea. I would love to support that idea. I'd love to spearhead that idea. Uh, and I would love to make that an idea that's also something that everybody else can get into and that won't feel like a Megillah over everyone's heads. I would not be opposed. I think that uh, that would be a fantastic thing, not to throw my um, member at large candidates under the bus, but I think that that's something that should also be available within the board that currently stands. Um, I also want to remind everybody that I am 30 uh, and that I am planning on living a very long time. Uh, and I will be in this position for as long as you want me to be, but I do recognize the importance of redundancy. This is not a small job that's being taken on. I would not be opposed to having somebody who works with me and uh, that learns the ropes as we go. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm game. Yeah. And just in terms of full disclosure, uh, the, the, all the finance, for example, all the finance emails and things like that, that also goes to the president. So the president and the, the treasurer always know what's going on. With each, with each other. We love redundancy. Yeah. All right. Any it's other questions? Question. Okay. Jonathan. No. Oh, no. I just want to say, recommend recommendations like that would not have to go to the board and the body that you voted on to have like those additional um, like no. assistant financial secretary or assistant treasurer. It's like a committee member. Yeah. The board. So. The board is is allowed to to appoint people to assist with other things. For example, if a committee chair should leave, the board will help find another committee chair, things like that. The board can totally do stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jonathan? Yeah, you sure? Uh, Sarah, why are you so awesome? Uh, Sarah, Sarah. 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 Sarah is so awesome. Thank you, oh, thank you like for you guys, that's all. Yes, all right. If I'm all awesome, it is a reflection of the people in front of me. I am a favorite. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, now for vice president, uh, first we'll have uh, Beth Goff. Oh, that's my height. Okay, you gotta put your glasses on. All right, well, first of all, first, this isn't part of my, uh-oh. Oh, no, no, I, I thought I deleted my entire thing, but I didn't. Anyway. <laughs> That would not be good. Actually, the first thing I want to say, actually, which is not part of this, is that I'm really enjoying all of the statements by all of the previous uh, nominees here. Now, because they're, uh, you know, uh, what can I say? If if I'm elected, I'm also running up on a post, <laughs> along with my other vice president candidate. But um, it's actually very exciting to know like the quality of the people that um, are likely going to be part of this this board is is really great. So that said, uh, so my name is Beth Goff, as you might already know, and I'm running for Vice President of Gannick. And it is my honor to be a member of the current board as member at large. And the past two years have been pretty enlightening and rewarding and instructional at the same time. Uh, I've enjoyed serving all of you and meeting all of, like a lot of you who I didn't know before. That's been fantastic. And so I hope to continue to be doing this as a vice president as well. So prior to be my becoming a guide, uh, my background includes working in human resources and benefits and then benefits data in both corporate and educational settings. So my final uh, job was at uh, Columbia University. So, but I began my guiding career in 2015 with the Central Park Conservancy as 
uh, as a guide for them. And uh, they, the Central Park Conservancy actually trained me as a guide. So that served to solidify my expertise in the parks, uh, history and natural features. I'm a bird watcher too. <laughs> and um, over the years, I expanded my knowledge base, uh, which essentially over time uh, led me to earn my license and then become her, becoming a member of GANIC in 2019. So of course, as I mentioned before, I met so many great people and uh, then I ran for the board in 2021. So one of the activities during my uh, term as a board member was actually, Emma just mentioned it, uh, I, I stepped in as a co-chair of the industry relations committee when a vacancy uh, in that position occurred and working for nearly a year with Bob Gelber to locate great venues for our meetings and with Harvey Davidson, who uh, worked so tirelessly for GANIC. Uh, it was honestly uh, a little exhausting because I don't know how these guys do it. <laughs> but it was also extremely rewarding. And it was really, and it, again, it was fun uh, working with these guys, but also the uh, the people at the different locations that we approached uh, for the venues. It, it, it got me around the city and into places that I'd never been before, and that was really cool. Um, so, and I would actually encourage everyone to participate in the committee uh, in an effort in some kind of way, because that's really fun too. So, uh, finally, if elected, I, lo I look forward to using my experience as a current board member to not only happily continue my service uh, for all of us guides, but also to learn from our new board members. So thank you very much. share the sentiment with everyone who's spoken so far and how much I love this industry. I actually started tour guiding 2014, so it's almost 10 years now. I've been living in Lower Manhattan for 29 years, been a GANIC member since 2018, and um, I also went through the certification program. And one of the things that I learned in the certification program was after giving tours to thousands and thousands of total strangers, um, big groups, small groups, all over the city, as soon as I was standing in front of my fellow peers, I was terrified. <laughs> I couldn't speak. There were a few times that people said, Catherine, take a deep breath. <laughs> so I'm feeling that right now. Um, one of the exercises that we were given in the certification committee was, how did you become a tour guide? And so I wanna share that story with you because I love what I do, and I'm still every day so grateful that I'm in this industry. And one of the things that I love about this industry is that all of the tour guides are so supportive of each other. That camaraderie that people keep mentioning is really amazing, and I've never found that in any other industry. So my career goes back to art history and fine art. Um, one of the things that I did in fine art was I was a part of a collaborative group um, and then we switched to becoming a design firm, doing branding, and even in that, we carried on that kind of idea and of community, collaboration. So that's one of the things that I will be bringing to this organization is that I love to collaborate. I don't believe that anybody can do something all by themselves. Um, so back to when I became a tour guide, uh, I ran this design firm for 20 years. We were hitting our 20 year mark and I just decided, I think I've had enough. And right when I had said that, um, there was a fire in my loft and um, we were completely flooded out and we were a live work situation. And so in one day I was homeless and jobless with a child in high school, going into high school and a dog. <laughs> so where do I go from here? So you know when you're thinking about your next career, your next part of your life, what are you gonna do? So I started writing down all the things that I think I'm good at and what I'd like to do. I knew I didn't wanna sit at a desk job. Um, I love people, I love, um, I love learning. I thought about teaching and um, I went to a friend's house and they were saying, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm still working, figuring out what I'm gonna do. 
And she said, um, you know what? I just got a job as a tour guide. And at that moment, have you ever had that epiphany where like the light bulb goes off and I was like, I want to do that. That like that was the first words out of my mouth. And ever since then, I haven't looked back. Um, and I love this organization. Um, I hope I can follow in the footsteps of so many incredible people who've been on the boards um, during the pandemic. Emma, Jeremy, Kevin, Jonathan, all of you were so incredible and indispensable for us to kind of carry on with like figuring out what was the next step. But anyhow, um, I run unopposed as vice president. I have no idea who nominated me, but thank you. Because <laughs> I wasn't expecting it, um, but I gladly take it um, as an honorable, as an honor and um, whatever is expected of me, I just want to contribute as much as everybody else has contributed. Thank you. Anybody have questions for Catherine or for Beth? John. I would like to say it was Emma who nominated Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk with you later. <laughs> Any questions or comments for Beth or for Catherine? No? Okay. All right, then thank you, ladies. <laughs> Okay, so um, finally, so for the position of president, there are actually two candidates. We'll start with Mike Morgenthal. So first of all, I'm having major bar mitzvah flashbacks. The last time I was told the podium under a disco ball, I think it was back in 1985. Uh, I also want to say that it's just been so impressive to hear all the candidates tonight, even though everybody's running unopposed. No matter who wins the presidential election, myself or Jeremy, uh, Gannett's in really good hands. So I want to thank everybody for stepping up. So, uh, my name is Michael Morgenthal, I'm running for president of Gannick. Most of you know me, but especially some of the newer no members might not, so to quote the great New York philosopher Jay-Z, allow me to reintroduce myself. Um, I served on the board for six years and also as the chair of the Industry Relations Committee uh, until 2021 when I decided to step back from Gannick for a little while. And uh, watching from afar from the last two years has kind of reinvigorated my interest in the association and kind of sparked uh, interest in figuring out what the challenges and what the opportunities are for Gannick in this, our 50th anniversary year. Um, I loved the six years that I spent on the board. I've missed it the last two years, and so I'm really excited to have the opportunity uh, to come back. Uh, I believe I am the best choice to keep Gannick moving forward for the next two years as the president. If elected, my guiding principle would be very simple. Every decision that the board will make will be guided by one question and one question only. Is this in the best interest of the Gannick membership and, the, and in the, so for the association at large? And I think my record of service uh, for Gannick kind of demonstrates my commitment to that ideal. Let me offer you a few examples. Uh, from 2017 to 2019, and then again virtually in 2021, I initiated, organized, and ran a job fair for the association. Uh, it was open to Gannick members and non-Gannick members alike. They had to pay a premium in order to attend. Um, guides got work because of this event. And I know that's not the only goal of our association, but certainly most of us are not doing this for free. Um, and uh, the other thing I was really proud of is every single one of these events was revenue neutral. And some actually turned a profit. The one in 2021 actually netted Gannick $10,000. So um, I am not promising that future job fairs will net $10,000, but I can tell you that if elected president, every endeavor that Gannick takes, I will make sure that there is attention paid to the bottom line. Uh, so we can rebound from the financial issues that we all know have befallen the association of late. A couple other things that I did in the early days of COVID, I created and administered a canceled tour database, and this was done purely to gather data to convince politicians and the public that we as freelance tour guides needed assistance and should be eligible for unemployment benefits. And I'm proud that I played a small role in us all getting the help that we needed during those dark days back in 2020. <laughs> Uh, I also created uh, something called Tour Your Own City, uh, which, while it wasn't quite as successful as we'd all hoped, the idea was to promote tours to local area New Yorkers when travel was still uh, a very difficult thing. 
and uh, it demonstrated, I think, the creativity and out-of-the-box thinking that I can bring to the position of Gannett president, uh, and certainly lessons were learned along the way if we ever have the chance to tackle big projects like that again. Uh, I think many of you know I'm a tireless advocate for tour guides. I spent a full year of my term on the board fighting against the regulations, uh, kind of limiting where tour guides could go at the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, and we were able to win some concessions from the National Park Service, which ain't easy, I can tell you that. Um, and uh, so I fully support uh, the efforts to ensure that live guides return to double-decker buses, as well as the efforts to try to clean up the Brooklyn Bridge, and I'll continue to make that a priority as president. Uh, while we all know that New York is the center of the universe, when it comes to the guiding industry, we also can take lessons from our colleagues around the world. Initiatives like the certification class, like the job fair, actually were inspired by programs run by other guides associations uh, in other locales. And I've been honored to represent Gannick uh, at events throughout the world, and I have contacts and very uh, good standing with our colleagues throughout the globe. And I uh, want to continue that trend. Uh, I have to say, uh, one of the things I greatly admire about Emma is that she really, over the last four years, has helped pump up Gannick's image throughout the tour guiding world, and that's something that I'm gonna make a high priority if uh, you elect me as president. And it's important, some ask why is that important? Growing Gannick's brand nationally and internationally ensures that Gannick guides will be the first who are thought of by people and tour operators who are looking for the best New York City guiding experiences. Um, we're entering our 50th year, which is an epic milestone. Anniversaries are a great time to reflect and also to look forward, and now is a great time to see what parts of our organization can be reinvigorated. One example is our monthly meetings, uh, which I would hope to kind of spark up a little bit, so to speak. Uh, I'm being told I'm out of time. I just want to say that I want to bring the fun back to Gannick, and I think you can see that everybody else who's already been up here is way ahead of me in that regard. So uh, with that, I just want to say I love this industry. I love everybody in this room. You are friends and colleagues and inspirations to me, and I humbly ask for your vote as the next Gannick president. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very, very much. Jeremy? I uh, just want to actually start by echoing what a lot have been said is that the candidates for the board are really, really amazing. I'm really grateful to all who have stepped up to volunteer for these positions. I think Dick Gannick is going to be in fantastic hands uh, in the next two years. Uh, first, I want to thank those who nominated me for Gannick's highest office. I am very proud to be running for president for this coming term. And I mostly want to start my speech with thanking all of my fellow outgoing board members, as most of you are not returning to the board one way or another, and everyone, even outside the board, who actively volunteers to make this organization great. Uh, as everyone in this room knows, this is an organization that does not have any paid staff. Everything that we do is done by volunteers, and I want to thank all of them. Um, as well as just all the members, even if you don't volunteer, who stuck with the organization uh, throughout the pandemic and just all the shifts that have been happening in our industry, we are very appreciative of that. So I first joined Gannick in the spring of 2016, and I really fell in love with the organization, as many people here have said, and the really great work that it does for the New York City guiding community. I immediately volunteered myself, first with the Public Relations Committee, which I have chaired now for over six years. Since then, there has not been a single GANA committee that I have not been involved with in some form over the last seven years or so. Over specifically the last five plus years, uh, Gannick has proudly been basically my second job. Um, at the risk of a little bit of self-congratulation, which is not a trait I'm particularly comfortable with, uh, there have been very few members of Gannick over the last five years who have done as much for this organization as I have. Um, not one day goes by that I do not do something for Gannick, as my poor beleaguered husband can attest. Um, in addition to the one elected position I currently hold as treasurer, uh, I've regularly done the following over the last few years. Uh, obviously as chair of the PR committee, managing Gannick's PR efforts, including our social media presence and press outreach, managing and running Gannick's YouTube channel. I've generally been over the last few years Gannick's primary sort of communications manager, sending out uh, emails and announcements and reminders to members on a regular basis. Um, except if there are anyone here who feel that Gannick sent you to any emails, that was somebody else, uh, was not me. Um, I have been a core member of Gannick's education committee, helping plan 
fan tours and facilitating PDPs and running many of GANIC Zoom sessions. Uh, I've helped create numerous content for the GANIC website, including our digital library, our blog, which we do have a blog, you should read it, um, event announcements, and more. I've also generally been the primary manager of GANIC's Wild Apricot system, uh, which I've always been able to reassure our, my fellow board members and volunteers, it's not as complicated as it looks. Um, that's a, a promise for the incoming board as well. I've also been a long-term co-chair of the membership committee, uh, serving under many uh, previous chairs, uh, including our current chair, Ann, uh, helping with member recruitment, planning holiday, holiday parties and other events, and securing great swag for all our members, um, and a lot more. Um, and furthermore, uh, you know, as a guide who sort of works locally, I'm always around, and you can be assured of my ability to remain focused on you as our membership here in New York. Uh, you know, I almost feel like I don't have to introduce myself. You've all seen me here at all of these uh, meetings over the last two years on FAM tours. I've been a regular presence um, for the organization, and one thing I do want to promise you is that Win or lose, you're still going to, uh, for better or worse, see me at all these meetings, and I uh, will continue to be a proud volunteer for Granik and all the great, great work it does. So I really want to just end by thanking you for your consideration of this position, and I hope that, uh, not so much even what I've said tonight, but just my work, I hope my work will speak for itself, and I hope I burnt your vote. Thank you. Or president. Yes, Eileen. I'm going to repeat the question, so if you say it, then I'll repeat it for everyone. Um, I have a question about the relatively new $5 fee for family if you have an opinion about that. And I know I'm putting you on the spot, Jeremy, because we're both on the Okay, so a question about the $5 fees for fans, and actually, um, since. I'll take this one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this. Uh, the $5 fee for registering for fam tours went into effect in June, I believe. Um, I, with full disclosure, uh, I was opposed to that uh, policy being put in place. Um, and the, the kind of compromise that was made was that the policy would only last through this current board. So by default, that fee will end uh, when the new board comes into effect in January. Um, my intention, if elected, would be to just let it expire, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, prior, the, the, the idea of that fee was to do a better job of what the no-show fee had done, which was to cut down on the amount of people know showing fam tours, which is frankly is very a disrespectful thing to do. Uh, prior to that fee being instituted, we were averaging about one to two no-shows per fam tour, which is really not good. Uh, since that fee has been instituted, I actually looked this up this past weekend, we have averaged one to two no-shows per fam tour. So the fee, frankly, has not accomplished its primary goal. Um, and the reason, again, for full disclosure, why I opposed it being implemented was I believe that the fee punished the people who were doing nothing wrong. Fam tours have always been a free amenity of membership. It would be my prerogative that it go back to that. If it had, I, did the microphone cut off? Oh, yes. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so it hasn't accomplished its goal, um, and uh, I lost my train of thought. And it just, yeah, it hasn't accomplished its goal, and I would like fan tours to go back to bring a free amenity of organic. The amount of revenue it was bringing in was so minimal to not even matter. So that's my opinion. I'm just happy to quietly let it expire in, in January. It was, even though I was not a fan of it, it was worth trying. It was worth trying. Um, and it just didn't work out. The $25 yes, we will still, it would definitely be my intention to keep the $25 uh, okay. fine for no showing fam tours. And I, I'll, I'll just quickly, quickly wrap up so Mike can take this. Um, that fee is, is not so much punishment, it's not so much revenue, it's just to really deter people from no showing. Because people volunteer to get fam tours, and it's really disrespectful to take a slot and not show up. Uh, I agree with Jeremy. Uh, I know that the Washington DC Guild, they've always charged for their fam tours and I never quite understood why. Uh, when you talk to many GANIC members, one of the first things they mentioned why they joined was for the fam tours. And I firmly believe that that should be included in the price of membership, which as we all know, has gone up uh, for this coming year. So uh, I would uh, move the, the same direction uh, if elected president. Okay, another question. Mike. Oh. 
So I'd like to know what directions do you choose uh, executive plan to uh, take out us into the new year? Are there new directions you're planning on? And if so, can you let us know about it? Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, I kind of ran out of time before I could bring up some of those things. Um, so I, I think Gannick is in a, a good shape uh, from a uh, camaraderie standpoint, but I think communication is often lacking internally and externally. And I think that's through nobody's fault. It's a, we're a volunteer organization. We all have time commitments. We all have time pressures. But I think things can be done more efficiently and more transparently for the membership. I think that that's actually one of the reasons why Gannick has always struggled to get more people involved in volunteering is it's not always communicated quite as well uh, uh, as it could be. Uh, number two, I want to expand our membership. We represent about 10% of all the licensed tour guides here in New York City. That's just not enough. I just got back from Turkey, as those of you who follow me on Facebook know from the zillions of photos I posted. I apologize if you were inundated. Uh, but I had the honor of touring with uh, Barish, who is the chair of the Istanbul Tour Guides Association. They all have to join. It is mandatory that they join. Now, they are also funded and, and helped by their government, but think of the power that they have because every single guide is a member of their association. They can really push for things like clearing off people on the Brooklyn Bridge or whatever things we, uh, uh, we are trying to accomplish. Um, I had mentioned the job fair. I want to bring that back. Um, I was pleasantly surprised to learn of the increase in membership over the last year. So there's not been a better time when we have a lot of new members to introduce them to the tour operators and other attractions that might be looking for new uh, town. Uh, last, uh, I don't want to take up too much time, um, one of the things that has always kind of struck me about Gannick and was starting to be addressed before COVID is the fact that the face of Gannick does not reflect the face of New York City. We need to become more diverse. We need to become younger. I want to help train, not train, but identify and inspire the next leaders for our industry. I've been a tour guide since 2010. I joined Gannick in 2013. Uh, not going to do this forever, obviously, uh, from a Gannick standpoint, but certainly going to tour guide forever, I hope. Um, but we need to get more diverse to reflect the face of the city that we represent. We're the most diverse city on the planet, and frankly, our membership doesn't uh, reflect that. There was a slight step towards that effort by the board before COVID hit. It was tabled because of COVID. Uh, I'd like, uh, if I become president, to make that one of the priorities. Yeah, so uh, one of the main things that I, I have tried to accomplish in my other roles within Gannick and that I really, really want to take to the next level as president is to make sure that when people are discussing New York City tourism, that they're discussing tour guides. I know this has been, this gets posted on the Facebook group a lot. When you see news articles about tourism in New York City, they interview hotel people and they interview, um, you know, all these other people, but they don't interview tour guides. Since I've been PR chair over the last, uh, you know, nearly seven years, that has changed. Uh, we've been featured on New York One multiple times. We've um, been featured together. Yes, uh, yeah, we were on a segment uh, in uh, 2020, uh, yeah. for Tour Your Own City. Um, and, uh, and most of those segments have been flattering to us. Um, and to really just increase, again, the, the role that not just Gannick, but tour guides in general have within the industry, that so people don't just think of us because I know one of my pet peeves is a tour guide, and I know there's gotta be a lot of yours as well. Is when I'm doing tours, you know, that part of the tour where you're just making idle chit chat with the guests, question I get all the time is, so what do you do for a living? Right. <laughs> well, I was like, you're looking at it. And, and people still think of us, people still think of us as uh, like, oh, this is a side gig. Uh, you're, you're, you know, it's not a primary job. It's not thought of as a career. I know like Michael Dillinger has really tried to do that with the certification program is this is a career. We are skilled people. Um, and so one of the things I've really tried to do with my PR is to promote that idea that we are skilled professionals within the tourism industry. We are the ambassadors of New York, and I really intend to continue to push that forward so that when there are problems within tourism or when people are thinking about what is the future of New York City tourism, that they contact guides, first well, and foremost. Thank you so much. I just have a question. I'd like to add a small part, too, to that question. How do you differ in past presence upon the past president, what would you be doing uh, differently than the past presidents we've had? Are there any particular perspectives that you do, uh, you know, are uh, considering? Well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one first. 
first just by saying that, I, like I said, I've been a member of Gannick since 2016. Um, I think uh, when I joined, uh, Michael Villager was in his first term as president. I thought he was great, and then Emily's been great. So I, the presidents that I've known have been excellent, so I will try to be just as more. I mean, I, I'm not even, it's, it's a tough question. Uh, I just want to do the best that I can for everyone. And I've had good examples to follow, in my opinion. Would you be collaborating with past presidents for, for their experience? I'd like, well, I mean, I'm like, be, yeah, I mean, I, I go back a little bit further in Gannick mode. The first president when I joined was Daniel Ellis. Uh, so it was kind of a clear demarcation line for those of you who were around uh, back then. Um, I think, uh, Mike, just to answer the question, uh, we, we've been blessed to have such great leadership uh, at the president and at the board level, and I think it's just building on what they've done. I don't think well, you really you need their insights. And oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. There, and that's that's gone on continuously mm -hmm. at all levels of Gannick. So I see no reason why that would change. Despite okay. that, all we're all friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Like, Midnight Tech oh, support chair, yeah. Michael. Yeah. Hi. Um, first of all, I want to thank you both. The fact that you. <laughs> step up and offer yourself a service, it's not easy. I know it, Emma knows it, a lot of us know this. And by the way, Mike, there's a past president's club that we talk. When there's an issue, <laughs> I call my past presidents, Emma and I have talked. That is the point. That and we always point. do, There's the communication always open. But I wanted to, to first thank you both, because it isn't easy, and you're both stepping up. And we're very blessed to have two experienced people, two very dedicated people to come into this. Uh, my question is, you know, Gannick has seen a little ups and downs, and we've come out of kind of like a scary little financial piece now, and hopefully we're on track. But uh, uh, looking over the budget, I know from past experience, the budget is kind of like, if this works, it's wonderful. But if it doesn't, yikes. Because there's very little margin for anything to expand our treasury, and even though we're not for profit, we are allowed to have a fund that keeps us going in case you know, we, we have a certain amount of money on it. So I'm just wondering what kind of vision you might have going forward in terms of how you could address kind of some of the GAVIC finances and kind of like goosing it up or not. Uh, rather than just the budget and just, because we know that membership dues are the primary area, but they're, you know, we gotta look at other things as well. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's obviously probably the overarching concern at this point, Michael, uh, since uh, we unfortunately did suffer some economic hits in the last uh, cycle. Um, in addition to just doing everything we can to promote Gannick to New York guides who are not members to increase our membership, which as you said, is our primary source of income, uh, trying to pump up the industry relations, the industry partner program, which is another source of revenue. The job fair, as I mentioned, could be another source of revenue. But to be honest with you, I don't think anything is off the table. Um, you know, we spend a lot of money on office space every year. I'm not saying it's not necessary, but I'm not saying it's necessary. There's a, been a lot of changes in that marketplace since we first contracted with WeWork, what, seven, eight years ago. And I think we could look at perhaps cheaper options in that regard. Um, there's nothing that's on that, that would be off the table. And I think a lot of that is gonna come from the membership as well. I'm not trying to avoid your question, but until you dive into the nitty gritty, it's a little hard to say, this can stay, this can go, this can stay, this can go. I will tell you, I know this has come up in the past, I personally have not always been the biggest advocate of the Gannick Awards. I have changed my thinking on that. Initially, I didn't really see the inspiration for it or the, the, the really the, the significance of it. I see it now, but I think going forward, we have to do everything we can to make that revenue neutral. And I don't think that's that hard. I think it will take a little bit more outside the box thinking than what the previous leadership has. I'm really excited to see what Sarah's gonna do with the gotcha. awards and with the committee. Um, so it, gotcha. because I think if I, re if I remember correctly, and this will be my last point, I don't wanna take too much time from Jeremy, uh, that other than office expenses, that is our biggest expense every year. Uh, so, uh, with the, and there is not, there's not been revenue coming in to, to match that to the same level. So, trying to make everything we do revenue neutral where possible, I think is what will set us up for success in the future. Uh, we are yeah. in a second five minute cycle. So Jeremy will answer the question and then we will. 
Bring it to a close. Yeah. It's right. also because we have uh, we have a uh, right. guest speaker who becomes so Jeremy. Jeremy has the floor. Jeremy okay, has so the, the as the current treasurer, I can obviously most speak to this right now. Uh, when you run into budget trouble, this is just basic math, is when your expenditures outweigh the revenues. And that's what was the issue in the last couple of years. Uh, the main way I would look to, I'm looking to solve this and why we were able to bring things under control in the last few months is a lot of membership recruitment, as Michael noted, the main revenue source for the organization is membership dues. Uh, so the more members we get, we've done really, really well the last few years recruiting new members, so we're going to continue to recruit new members and just continue to ensure that we're providing good value for our membership so that they will renew. Um, and the main thing is to really look at the revenue and make sure that we're not spending money where it's not needed. Some of our committee members have been really good. I, I actually explicitly want to call out uh, Bob Gelder here and Harvey Davidson, who have been great at finding us venue space that costs us uh, you know, little to nothing. Uh, uh, and that's been really great. Basically, wherever we can get away with not spending money, we are going to do it. We shouldn't spend money where we do not have to. Um, and so just look at where we can, and this is in a sense, sense of cutting corners. I still intend for us to have networking happy hours and many other great events and to have great venues like this, uh, but to do so in a way that is keeping track of the fact that we do not have a massive six, seven figure you know, budget to play with. We are a small volunteer organization with a limited budget and we will do continue to do amazing things within a reasonable uh, you know, revenue, uh, with, our revenue and our expenditures. So bring the expenditures down and the revenue up. I mean, I know that sounds like just basic math, but we lost a little bit of sight of that in the last couple of years, and we are just really going to go back on track. That's that would be my promise. Yeah. So any other? Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mike. So any other questions? No, no, no. People have other questions because we are um, we are running out of time with that, and we cannot be. Um, we have until eight, but we do also have a speaker coming here to tell us about this wonderful site just to get to introduce us um, to to your site. And I also believe she has to run too. So come 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 up. So in your Hi, Jeremy. 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 H
right? This extraordinary sanctuary that you see, forget the politics at the moment. But knowing it goes back to the 1880s, and most people have no idea what's inside when given the opportunity, and it only became because people talked to each other. It would not have happened otherwise, right? And because, yes, I am a person who gets an email and responds immediately to an email. You don't have to know the people. Everyone will tell you. Everybody has my cell phone. That's just the way you build community. And unless we're going to build, and what people need most now, and where I think you all, and then I'll talk about where I think you all have something to offer is community connection and caring. And if you determine how you translate that into real, not into the best social media and not into this, because in fact, most of us don't have the numbers of people on our Instagram that's gonna be worth spending any money on Instagram. So you have to really know, like it's easy to say, oh, we need Instagram, okay. How many people are actually on our site? And how much money are we spending on the Instagram? So I use that because there are some real basics that I have learned in 1990 to 2001 and here. People need caring, connection, and community. It sounds simple. It's one of the harder things to find today in our society. How you guys go about building that, you'll know that far better than me. But I think that there are many spaces and I will go to rents and things like that. But there are many spaces that are far more affordable and not-for-profits who would love the rental income from a place like yourselves who will also then make them aware of you, right? So that when you appear in our newsletter, and, I, and we thank you for being here and we make sure that that happens, right? Then people start learning about places, and the more collaboration and the more connection we all create, the better we'll be. In terms of the center at West Park, there are an extraordinary group of about eight who believed with the church, going back before this all began, that there should be a center for the arts. And it was built upon the values of accessibility, affordability, the importance of arts and culture as a universal language, and sacred space being an anchor to a neighborhood and to a city. Okay, you know, relationships, we all know, go all sorts of directions. This one, I didn't come into the story, so I don't have all the back history. The way I got here was an 84-year-old and an 88-year-old who knew me from the JCC days, said, we're having some budget trouble. Could you come just talk to us about our budget? Well, I said, you are having budget trouble. You have to restructure, you have to eliminate one staff person. I mean, it was, you know, no one, no one invites me to something if they want to hear just what they want to hear. They either invite me because, and I tell people, I put myself out of jobs all the time because when I work with not-for-profits and I work with places like this, I won't, I can't do it. I can't take money from people if I know they're going down the wrong path even if it's my earnings at stake, right? So I said to them, look, <laughs> you can't have the staff you have. These are the things, like you're looking at your budgets, and, um, and they were receptive. Um, we restructured, and a person gave them six days notice that the artistic director, literally, who'd been here since 2000 something, six days notice he wasn't coming back because he took another job having nothing to do with this. And there, there were these board members and this nice consultant who's telling them they can't do this. And they look at me and say, well, what should we do now? We don't have any staff left. So I said, look, threats are opportunities. Look at how much your budget situation has improved. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really true, because then you get to build back without worrying about the people you don't want to hurt. Maybe we didn't want to put anyone out of a job and all of those things. So this is now March 6th. There's a whole season to be planned. Um, my kids would tell you that she's great on the basketball court. Do not put her in front of singing classes. Um, but here I was with a group of artists who were supposed to perform here. So the first thing was to meet each of them and say, look, we're going to do what you expect of us. And you have to know that I'll bring people in to make sure this happens. And you have to call me. If it's not working, you got to call me. And because of that process, it led to the man you met tonight, Nick Brown, who was one of the artists at the time, who on 
my Zoom, because I met each of them individually, says to me, Debbie, you know, I really believe in this building. And he started talking and he talked about his art and Stonewall and the different things he did. And you could feel in his being that his being reflected what this environment was supposed to be about. I couldn't tell you if he was the best actor or, or director, I mean, people will tell you that he is, but I, what I knew was his soul was the right soul to take this on. And he was lived on 92nd Street, which was really important for a building that needs to be accessed the way you guys did and the way we try to make it. Bottom line, it was an organic event, just like us being here tonight together because of, of um, Bob and why am I blanking on your colleague who came to see you. There he is. Harvey. I, I knew that. Okay. Thank you, Harvey. So um, the state of play is that um, the same organic process, and I want to really do justice to these people. Um, one of the artists in the building who also comes out of the entertainment world had told his friend, who is now a sculptor and also a an artist, um, an actor, that he thought there was sculpting space in this building. And he sh they should call me. And it happened that our boys knew each other when they were temporarily living in, in our building at, at the Montana. And uh, I get this call saying, uh, Mark Ruffalo would like to talk about a sculpting studio. And I said, look, I'm happy to let Mark know that we literally met once because of our boys, but I don't expect anything. And if he wants to meet me at the site, I'll meet him. So, and Mark will tell you to this moment, all of these beautiful names that you see, I'm the one person who would walk by them all the time, <laughs> literally. And even knowing them, he'll tell you, she still doesn't care. I, sh I care about their souls and hearts and, and all they've given. And so bottom line, he walks into the sanctuary. And he says to me, I've never been here. And I know they're planning on tearing this down. That's ridiculous. And I said, he said, I'm going to take on this fight with you. And I said, well, if you do, you can't have the sculpting studio because that would be a conflict of interest. Then it looks like you're taking on the holding it because you have a sculpting studio in the building. He said, not a problem. I won't have a sculpting studio. And he, of course, as you read in the papers and so on and so forth. And he brings Kenny Lonergan and Kenny Lonergan now has Tony Kushner coming to do a play reading like wow. they're doing. And uh, Susan Laurie Parks and Susan Laurie Parks is bringing, that's how it works. You know, I, it wasn't like I said, okay, I gotta get all these five playwrights, right? And they're, they understand the power of the arts and culture. They also understand that more than ever, these particular people, that humanity needs spaces like this. So the story shifts last May, and some will say, well, that's because you became executive director. Look, I have the privilege of, of yes, helping to conduct some situations and, and have certain abilities. But if Mark Ruffalo had to be the person who partnered so that on May 13th we got the press we did and Amy Schumer was there and Wendell Pierce, with, now Wendell Pierce I met at Cafe 82, we can tell that story. But the bottom line is because of all of them, a great deal of visibility has come to the space. And then when they determined, so on June 13th, when there was the last hearing before yesterday, when 69 people are there, which has never happened before, and of the 69, only 13 want it demolished. The story starts changing, and then the articles in the papers start changing because all of these people also spoke in some testimonies. And, and I, I hate it in the New York Times, someone said, but, I, but he only gave $2,500. I think they were referring to Mark. And I was like, what is wrong with you? Like, he is giving in ways that if you, in kind hours. This man earns, and he's choosing to get, and he literally was here every day for a month and a half to get the press, to get the people, to get the everything, right? And, and this performance that I hope, whether it's the 16th or the 17th, uh, and you will hear, um, there will be an encore performance of This Is Our Youth, which is the pro, Kenny Lonergan wrote This Is Our Youth, happens to be about this neighborhood because they went to the Walden School and that's why he wrote it. And the original cast was Mark Ruffalo, it was his first play ever, 
and Missy Yeager, who's flying in from California at her own expense. And it was supposed to be Josh Hamilton, because he was in the original. Again, I don't even know who Josh Hamilton is. But <laughs> Josh Hamilton couldn't do it. So Kenny Lonergan calls me and says, Debbie, look, someone wants to really do this part. And I said, okay, Kenny, this is your play. Like, <laughs> you tell me who's doing the part. And that's, he says, look, Matt Damon is taking Josh Hamilton's. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, that name I even know. Like, <laughs> Goodwill Hunting. Give me Goodwill Hunting any day. I can't find those movies anymore. And so I even know Matt Damon. And, and the point becomes, and, and so you know it, that there is a benefit. And yes, the, first, the ticket is $500. Now, compared to New York tickets for these people to see them in person, $500 is not a lot for a benefit, which is, however, and there are sponsorships in the way. One of the things I said to them was, would you be willing to do two performances? And the second one be for the community at a different price point than the benefit, because our values of affordability, accessibility, emerging artists, artists don't earn the kind of funds that they could necessarily attend. That would be true to our mission. There wasn't a question in their mind. They will be doing a second. Performance. Now that's not in the public domain yet, and you can understand why. Because that would, it's like if you had the awards, but you charged, you had it the second night and you didn't charge, right? It will that that'll really affect your budget. So, <laughs> so the you know all of this happening led to a foundation that became aware of us. They gave us the runway these six months to really have me here, to have Nick here to be able when there was the flood. I mean, if you ask about the state of the building, everybody, all the lies that were put out, and I never use that word, and my kids will say, she tells the truth as hard as it can be. This was never a $50 million problem. This was never danger. I wouldn't have you in this building if it were danger. It is structurally sound. Yesterday's LPC mm -hmm. meeting made it clear that the independent structural engineer from a firm called Old Structures, that LPC, Landmarks Preservation, were the ones who hired him. He came back and his report is online and you can go read it, and says, even West Park, the center at West Park's number, which says 26 million versus their 50 million, is wrong and overdue, over. And that for, for 1.7 million, we can get the sidewalk scaffolding down, and for 9 million, we can, do all this work, and one doesn't have to do it all at once. So, look, when we raised $95 million in the 90s for the JCC, raising whether it's 30, 40 million, and, and I don't say that lightly, but to preserve a place that's been here since 1884. And someone said to me, okay, Debbie, you really love this project? If I let you choose between tearing down the JCC or tearing down the center at West Park, which you're tearing down. I said, it's not even a question. I'll tear down the JCC, and they looked at me aghast. I said, we know how to build the JCC. No one can build this building again. There you go. Yeah. And, and, and no one, you guys are the ones who are protecting the history of this city, just like this building is trying to do, and the values of the city, and it's not simple. And with all the different automations and all the different things, I'm sure it's harder to be yourselves than you ever have been. But I watched Open House New York. You guys bring something to the table that doesn't exist, which is a real passion and commitment to the history and the values and everything that we stand for. So we left the LPC meeting knowing that the tables have turned. Now, does everybody have to end up protecting themselves so LPC doesn't look bad, they don't get sued by the developer? God bless, you know, a developer that is willing to put millions into legal. If you read the article, it's, it's a fascinating thing. There was one article that came out yesterday. It came out yesterday afternoon. It had to have been written in advance. And it's in the commercial real estate something, if you Google it, right? West Park Church wins to demolish the building. I don't know what meeting they were at. But, and you read the independent report and you say, what are they even talking about? But that's what you can pay for in our society. That's the truth, we all know it. We watch sadly too many ways that people pay for, for lies. So where we are is the season couldn't be fuller. 
the use of the building both for events like this as well as for places that don't have anywhere to go. And we hope you're going to come back. Right? If someone said to me, you know, can I help you find office space this last? Sure I can. Right? Because one of the beauties of having worked here since 1987 is, thank God, people know if I pick up the phone, there's going to be something worthwhile. And I'm not going to call them just to solicit them because they gave to the JCC. So any way that we can be of help and partner with you, we'd love to. I'm sure this was longer than I was supposed to talk. I apologize. So, and, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't introduce Debbie properly. Debbie Hirschman is the, art, the executive director of the center here. So. <laughs> Any questions? I'm happy to yeah. take them. I One or two very short questions. And I'll answer short. Very quick I was questions. not short. Not you are. I've been over your program, and they're excellent. And I know that this is a, a nationally registered property. Is that correct? No, they wouldn't let us. Re we we got approval to be registered, and the church would allow it to be registered. So it was turned out. No, it wasn't submitted. Oh no, it would have been allowed to be registered. The church, as the owner, had to sign the document, and they wouldn't do it. You don't have enough money in, in, in the coffers to do a full restoration. I've read that in the New York Times. Well, no, no. Well, the and sun. what position is the board taking? Is it evenly divided to turn down the building oh. or to restore the building? Oh, you're talking about the landmarks for what? <laughs> okay. um, I, I, I don't read tea leaves, and mm. I don't rely on tea leaves. What I rely on are facts. So we do have enough money to restore this building over time. It doesn't need to be done at once. And one of the things I'm most excited about. If you're going to delay it, you're going to get a different vote from the board. No, no. I am not. As long, I, my, I plan on having $1.7 million and taking down the, the scaffolding. In the, in, now, just understand that in order to take down the scaffolding, you have to apply to DOB, and, and it will take three months at least to get their approval to do the work. Okay. Once you start the work, it's a probably if I if if they're as rapid as on every front, maybe it's a nine month process. I need to show that we have 1.7 million dollars and we're going to be doing it, and we apply to DOB. Once, once that happens, the Landmarks Preservation Committee can no longer say that the things for which they're arguing, it's unsafe, it's this and that. And even the report yesterday makes it very clear that this sidewalk scaffolding, just so everybody knows, when I learned this, I said the whole thing's a sham. Do you know when the first sidewalk scaffolding went up and, and how long it's been up? 19, no, 1980. There has been sidewalk scaffolding here, the same, and it used to be wood. The thing that the center of West Park did with the church was put up the new one. But that means there's been neglect of this building that was allowed since 1980. So, so the, the, the point being that facts speak their own truths. No one has been talking about those truths. I believe that the 1.7 million that we will announce at the benefit, which I, you could say, well, why didn't you announce it sooner? Until yesterday, I didn't have that independent re report. Your fundraising is ongoing? Yeah, so Mike, that will finish because we need to finish the, the, the question. So, Mike, if you could have a seat. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Anything else? I, I think and if anyone wants to write a check tonight, <laughs> you know that I would never turn that down. And feel free, feel free to send us information. That well, like anyone who to wants to be on the mailing list, and that doesn't solicit you, should just literally tell Bob, right, tell you guys, or, or I'm going to give each of you, and I did this on a Zoom this afternoon, and you'll see it in the newsletter when you get it. I'm giving you my email. I use a personal email. I don't use an institutional one, because then people think that somebody else is writing it for me. So my email is D-E-B-B-Y, and whoever takes secretarial notes could send this out, D-E-B-B-Y at D-H-E-M, like Mary, A-H dot com. If you want to be on the emails that will just tell you all the programs and will tell you when this encore performance is happening, which is at a very different rate and has paid what you can, 
So if someone can't pay at all, they'll be in that performance. I mean, clearly there's going to be a sum up. What? Sure. D E B B Y at D H E M like Mary, A like Apple, H like Harry dot com. We will definitely post that. Um, and, and, and really, if you are interested, I, you're getting this firsthand. If you are interested in the encore performance, because the benefit is not affordable, which is understandable, now is the time you should email me your names, because you've gotten this early, and it's not known, and it's not that I'm hiding it. It will become known but you can understand that. I can't do the second one. There is, there is a date for it, and you can imagine that it's in close proximity to the 16th. Um, so, thank you. What? We can't bribe you to tell us yeah, the 1.7 million dollars. Well, you tell me how much we're bribing. All right, thank you I, think so I, I think I gave you all the details. Yeah. Enough of an insider yeah. training. Yes. Enough so, uh, with the schmooring. Thank you. 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 I go home. I started very early today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So thank you all. It was a really interesting, productive meeting. For those who had questions about the yes, yeah, so for those who had questions um, for our presidential candidates, for Mike or for Jeremy, uh, you can post those. Okay, when we have the the statements going up. We can start the discussion on the website. The easiest way is actually would be in the Gannick Facebook group and have a discussion going there. But their members, their um, their statements and all statements will be posted. And sure. Oh yes, and at the St. James on 81st and Amsterdam. Okay, I think John was waving and chose Jeremy. So John. Can we thank all of our candidates? <laughs> I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn.